All right, well, thank you for inviting me to speak on this webinar. We're going to talk about pets and fireworks and a little bit about Zilkeen as well. So first of all, we're going to cover a happy pet and the basics for uh, keeping your pets happy. We're going to have a look at some of the support options that are available, uh, coping with fireworks and sound desensitization programs, and then we'll finish up with a summary of uh, what's better to do at the end. So in terms of keeping cats happy, uh, cats are not generally that sociable a creature, so the best thing to do is follow the N plus 1 rule. Um, so N is the number of cats that you have in your household, and then for all the resources that you're providing, which we'll go through in a sec, um, you want to add at least one more. So if you have two cats in your household, you want at least three sets of each resource. So the first resource that we look at is litter trays. Even if you have a cat that's used to toileting outside, it's still really important to provide a litter tray inside. Um, you never know when they might not want to toilet outside or uh, there might be an issue with going outside or it might be just raining. Um, so it's always important to have litter trays in the house. And as I say, follow the N plus one rule. So if you've got two cats, you want at least three litter trays. And ideally, they'd be spread out around the house so they're not all in the same place. So if you've got one cat that's blocking that resource from your other cats, then um, each cat has an opportunity to use those. The other thing with litter trays is ideally it wouldn't be next to a glass window or door, just because if there's any cats outside looking in, it might put your cat off using it. The next thing to talk about would be food. Um, so again, follow the M plus one rule. And with food, obviously we don't want them near the litter trays. Cats are quite um, clean animals and they're quite um, picky about such things. So ideally you'd have your food away from your litter trays and also away from your water source. So um, cats quite often will not drink from water bowls that are placed next to food either. Um, what you might find is that your cat doesn't want to drink from a water dish at all and might actually prefer running water. Uh, my own cat certainly prefers running water and will very frequently jump in the bath despite the very uh, expensive water fountain we've provided. So those water fountains are an option which you can get from pet, pet stores or on the internet, um, which a lot of cats will actually prefer to a dish. Sleeping areas, again, follow the M plus one rule. And with sleeping areas, think in 3D for cats. Cats feel a lot more secure when they're up high and they can survey their territory. So um, quite often it's useful to think about you know, having a higher up bed um, if, if that's a possibility within your home. Scratching posts, so all, all cats will want to scratch. Um, it keeps their claws sharp and they do it um, naturally. With um, scratching posts that you can buy, um, the best ones that you can find are actually the ones, like in the picture, um, that have vertical stripes. Um, because they represent the bark of a tree and cats will actually prefer those to the spiral ones, although quite a lot of cats will use the spiral ones, but it's important to have scratching posts in your home and ideally they would be near entry and exit points to your home, so that's where the cats are going to want to reassert their territory um, and they do that by scratching as well, so uh, having them near entry and exit posts is a good, good idea. Toys. Uh, cats obviously like to play and like to hunt, although when your cat's a kitten it might be cute for it to hunt your hand, that becomes less funny when it becomes a full grown cat, so we'd always recommend playing with toys, and there are various toys that you can get out there, there are things that recommend um, other um, mimic different types of play that your cat will want to do, so chasing along the ground or jumping in the air and pouncing, so there's a whole variety that you can that you can get your hands on. And the last thing to say is that um, obviously Zilkeen can help, and I'm going to talk about Zilkeen a little bit more um, a bit later, but it is an option for keeping your cat nice and happy. So moving on to dogs, um, the thing that we recommend with the, with the dogs is a doggy den. So this is um, somewhere, we've put a few examples of where you might want to create one, but essentially this is somewhere that is big enough for the dog to stand up, lie down, turn around and kind of be comfortable in there. So it needs to be big enough, quite often the dog crates are good 
a good idea if you can get one that's big enough for your dog, but somewhere for them to feel nice and secure and that's their safe haven. So where you'd want to put it is where they feel comfortable, probably in areas that aren't too busy, although dogs are obviously very sociable animals and they're pack animals and they would want to be um, with the rest of the, the family, so their pack. So somewhere where they feel secure, somewhere where they feel comfortable um, and possibly near to the rest of the family. Smells, obviously dogs have an excellent sense of smell and familiar smells will make them feel comfortable and make them associate their den with positive things. So if you've got some used blankets or some towels or maybe even some old clothes, um, if you pop them in there then they'll associate that with a nice familiar smell and it will make them happier to be in there. With regards to treats and toys, what we want to try and do with the doggy den is establish this a good few weeks in advance of any change in circumstances. That might be fireworks or it could be something else. And in order to encourage them to go in there and have a positive association with that den, um, some treats or some toys, depending on what your dog would prefer, would be a good idea to pop in there to encourage them to go in. So an ideal toy would be maybe a hollow chew toy that's filled with some kibble and that will probably keep them active and occupied for quite some time. And the last point that we want to make about the doggy den is free access. So this should always be somewhere where the dog can choose that they want to go there. They're never forced to go there. They would never be shut in there. It would be never used as um, something for punishment. So it would always be their choice to go there. Um, and we're going to talk a bit more about the doggy den specifically related to fireworks in a little while. So moving on to Zilkeen. Um, Zilkeen is one of uh, the products that we um, manufacture and distribute. Um, it's based on a protein which comes from cow's milk and it's called trypsin hydrolyzed bovine casein. You might also have heard it called alpha casozapine. Um, it's available in three sizes, so you have 75 milligram, a 225 milligram, and a 450 milligram, and it comes in packs of 20 or 100 capsules. So you can obviously buy a pack of 20 for a short term um, kind of change, or if you want to buy for long term management of something, then you can buy the 100 capsule pack. As we said, it's based on a natural ingredient, so it's actually thought to produce a relaxing effect, similar to that that you see in babies after they've had a milk feed. So it's quite a nice, relaxing product to be giving to your cat or dog. So the, it's in capsules, and the capsules are actually color-coded according to which size, so that makes life easy, especially if you've got maybe a dog and, and a cat, or two different sized dogs. Um, they can be given whole, or they can be opened and sprinkled on the food, or they can be dissolved in liquid. So there's lots of different ways that you can give silkeen. You give it just once a day, um, and that then makes it very cost effective. And it is actually lactose and preservative free. So if you do have um, a dog, perhaps, who's lactose intolerant, then you can safely give silkeen um, in the confidence that it's got no lactose within it. So how we would recommend giving it, this is a dosing chart um, for Zilkeen, which you will find on the boxes anyway. Um, but as we say, there are three different sizes of capsule, and depending on the weight of your dog or cat, you might may need to give one or two capsules a day. So for short-term use, so such as something like perhaps the fireworks season, you'd want to start a minimum of three days before any anticipated change and then continue for the duration of that change or until the animal settled down. So another example of that might be moving house, where you actually want to start um, before you start packing boxes and things that might actually make your dog or cat realize that something's happening. And then you would continue when they're in their new house until they've settled down and they're happy. For long-term use, you would start as and when you need to, and then you need to continue that for as long as you need, but you would need a minimum of at least one to two months, um, just because it's going to take that little bit longer. It's a long-term issue. 
So where can Zilkeen be used? There is a whole host of areas where Zilkeen can be used. We're not going to cover all of those today. Um, but there are lots of different situations where it can be used. And um, today we're going to actually focus on fireworks. So moving on to fireworks specifically. So what we're going to cover, we're going to cover what pets are actually afraid of. Uh, why is it important that these fears are managed? And then we're going to look specifically at short-term management for the firework season and then long-term management for the firework season. So what are pets afraid of? Have a little think before I move on to the next slide. But the PDSA did a study and they surveyed over 11,000 pet owners and they actually found that pet owners um, said that over 82% of dogs were actually afraid of something, which is shown in the graph on the screen. And the thing that dogs were most frightened of was fireworks. So nearly half of all dogs owners thought were frightened of the fireworks and then various other bits and bobs um, as well. So cats, moving on to cats, 91% of owners report that their cat is afraid of something. And again, uh, fireworks came, nearly half of all cats would be frightened of fireworks. So again, quite a common thing for our pets to be frightened of. So in terms of why it's important to actually deal with these problems, these problems can start as quite a mild fear, um, but they can have a cumulative effect over time. And then you might see that you actually get reactions to other loud noises with your pets. So they might start off just being frightened of fireworks, but then it could actually progress that they then become frightened of thunder and lightning. And then that might progress that they're frightened of other noises as well that they hear. Um, so it's important to, to try and tackle it if we can and nip it in the bud sooner rather than later. So products which you might want to use that might help. Um, obviously, Zilkeen we've already mentioned. There are also pheromones on the market which you can get for cats and dogs. Um, which again made the, the animals feel a bit more secure. Um, and then there are also obviously medicines and prescription drugs that you can get from your veterinary surgeon. So in terms of which of these options would be the best for your pet, we'd advise having a chat with your vet and they can advise as to which is going to be most appropriate. So what we want to do is prepare in the run up to bonfire night, which we're going to cover next, and then we're going to cover what to do actually on the night. So in the run-up to fireworks season, going back to our doggy den, we want the doggy den to be prepared weeks before fireworks night so that uh, the dog's already settled into it and feels nice and comfortable within it. And as we said before, we'd want a room where the dog feels nice and comfortable. And specifically with fireworks, when they may be a bit frightened, they get very reassured by owners, generally dogs, because they are pack animals. So you might want to consider putting your doggy den for fireworks in a room where the family is likely to be that evening. So perhaps the living room, perhaps the kitchen. Ideally, you'd have it away from any windows, obviously, so that they can't hear and see as much. And we'd want to cover the den up with a blanket. So again, it feels like a nice, secure space, but it also muffles some of the sounds that they might be hearing. We want to put the treats and toys in there on the, on the day as well. So again, it's a nice, positive place. And also things like hollow G toys filled with kibble can be a nice distraction for them. And again, we want them to be able to access that freely at all times throughout the entire fireworks season. With regard to cats, we want to remember our N plus one rule in terms of resources. Um, so with food, water, litter trays, hiding places, everything, we want uh, at least as many plus one as the number of cats that you have. Um, a specific point with regard to litter trays, you might need even more than that if they're not used to toileting inside. So if you have a cat that normally toilets outside, obviously on fireworks night, we're going to want to keep them indoors. So you might need an extra litter tray. And it's generally good advice to also provide at least one litter tray um, on every floor of your home as well. In terms of hiding places, um, everyone that owns a cat will know how effective a simple cardboard box can be. So um, don't underestimate the power of a cardboard box in terms of a nice secure hidey hole for your cat. Or as I said before, 
think 3D, they might want to be up high, in which case consider putting a bed up on top of something. Obviously, keep it safe, but that might be a good idea too. So with Zilkeen, we want to start at least three days before fireworks begin. Preferably, we'd start five before fireworks begin because it can be a little bit unpredictable as to when people are actually going to start setting fireworks off. People might be practicing and that kind of thing. And then we'd want to continue that throughout the entire fireworks season, which depending on where you live and, and the area that you're in, you'll probably know better when that's likely to be. Certainly some urban areas will, fireworks will continue all the way through with Christmas parties and things like that until January. So bear in mind your own area and kind of continue it as long as you think you're going to need to. So our top tips. So with dogs, try and walk them during daylight hours if you possibly can. I uh, appreciate with work commitments and things, that might not always be possible. If you do have to walk them in the dark during fireworks season, then make sure that you've got them on a lead because you wouldn't want them to go running off if they get frightened. And also try and walk them in street lit areas. So if any flashes do go off, they're less likely to actually notice them. Cats should always be kept in um, when it's dark. So if you have got a, a a cat flap it's ideal to actually close it or if you've got a cat flap that you can adjust the, the timer settings you can actually set the timer so that after dusk it actually won't let the cat back out again so they can be quite helpful um, and obviously keep the windows and doors shut um, we don't want any uh, runaway escapees and it's quite useful if it's possible in your home if any of the family are going to be coming in in and out um, to have a, almost an airlock system where you have two doors. So maybe you have um, a kitchen door and a utility door that you could potentially use as a make sure one door's closed before you open the other door to go outside. So it just helps make sure that your cats and dogs stay where they're supposed to be um, and don't go running off outside. If they were to run off outside, obviously it's important that with dogs they have a collar with a tag and also with um, cats and dogs that if they have a microchip, your details are up to date so that if anybody does pick them up, they can get them rehome to you as soon as possible. So other things that you can do, we've talked about maybe offering a distraction such as a new toy or a treat um, and you'll know your pet better as to which one of those is going to distract them more and how long for. We would recommend putting the television or the radio on to try and muffle the noise um, and just have a think about the kind of thing that you'd want to have them listening to or watching so it's not going to be firework displays on the TV or radio because that would obviously defeat the point. And also close the curtains. Again, it'll help to muffle the noise and it'll also prevent them seeing all the, all the flashes outside. So what we would recommend that you do is stay in if you possibly can with your pets during fireworks time and they will feel more secure with you around. And then it's really important to behave with your pet as you would normally. So um, if they are a bit frightened and they come to you for reassurance, reassure them as you would normally. But it's important that you don't go and react to them, let them come to you. If you go and make a big fuss of them, if they're frightened, you can actually end up reinforcing that fear and uh, they will then see that there is something to be frightened of. So just try and behave as normally as possible with them. So ideally, we wouldn't force animals to come, um, especially if it's a dog and they're happy in their den or if the cat's happy in their cardboard box. If they're happy where they are, just leave them um, and, you know, carry on doing what doing what you're doing. It's really hard, I know, sometimes not to react to fireworks yourself, but if you can possibly help it, again, if they see you reacting to it, particularly with dogs, it lets them know that there's something to react to. So if you can, just be as normal as possible and just carry on with what you would normally be doing. And last but not least, but a very important point is not to punish your pet. If they're frightened or maybe they're whining or they're barking, um, they are frightened for a reason and if you punish them, what you're, all you're actually doing is reinforcing that fear. And again, 
giving them something to be frightened of. So I know it's difficult, but try not to punish your pet. So moving on to long-term management, um, we talked before about tackling it, um, tackling the problem so that it doesn't accumulate over time. So actually what we would recommend for this would be sound desensitization. So this is a proven way of managing sound-related unusual behaviors. Um, and how you actually do it is you expose your cat or dog to various noises in a controlled way. And it may take a few weeks, it may take several months. Um, so a bit of patience is required, but if you can persevere with it, it's really worth doing for the future. So sound des desensitization specifically for fireworks is carried out in three stages. You would start with component sounds, which are just an individual firework sound, and then you move on to complete sounds, so maybe a few fireworks, and then you move on to a full firework display, which is all the fireworks going off, and the sound of the bonfire, and the crowd cheering, and everything like that. So when you want to start doing your sound desensitization, obviously we wouldn't recommend doing this during fireworks season because they'll still be hearing fireworks outside so you need to wait until the fireworks season's completely over so that's probably going to be january or february in most parts of the country and then when you want to start it we recommend listening without your pet first so that you know what's coming and you're happy with what's going to happen and then you need to establish your starting volume um, which we'll talk about in a sec so Zilpine Pet is a website that's designed for pet owners. It has loads of information on there about different things, and it also has a lot of information on there about sound desensitization and how to do it, and all the tracks are available on there as well. So you can actually go on there um, and get those off there, and also a reminder of how to do it. So establish the starting volume is the first step. Um, the starting volume is the highest volume that your pet will tolerate without any reaction at all. So by any reaction, even if they just flick their ear towards the sound, we would consider that to be a reaction. So you may actually be barely able to hear the sound, it's going to be quite quiet. So what you want to do is make sure that your pet settle down and nice and calm and then give them a long lasting treat or toy so that they're unaware and then start the component soundtrack and make sure that it's at zero volume when you press play. From there, gradually move the volume up and as soon as they react, turn it ever so slightly back and that is your starting volume and it's a good idea to actually write that down so that when you're going through all the different tracks and all the different stages you're aware where you need to start from so we've covered those so start with a component track at the starting volume gradually increase that volume so do it ever so slowly in a controlled manner and then until you reach a realistic level, so until it's as loud as it would be if they were in the home and a firework display was going on outside. So if your pet reacts at any stage of this, you obviously want to turn it back and start again. And I would probably leave it for the day and then come back to it if you have a reaction. So the other important thing is to keep it unpredictable. So we'd like to play it in different rooms around the house, have different people present, play it at different times of the day. If you can, play it outside. It just helps um, to keep it unpredictable and then the dog won't learn that all oh, that's played in the kitchen and it's played when mum's there and it's played at tea time. Uh, dogs and cats are very, very good at learning patterns. Um, so it's really good to keep it unpredictable. So then if you do happen to be out and about when a firework goes off, it won't be surprising for them. So as we said, when your pet's okay with the component sounds track, you'd then repeat the entire process with the complete sounds track, and then you'd move on to the full firework display. Um, and then once you've got the full firework display at full volume, then we would consider that the program's complete, obviously, without your pet reacting to it. Um, the thing about that would be, obviously, it might be worthwhile even once you've got to that stage to then continue to do it every now and again so that they don't then 
forget it. So once they've learned that this is normal and it's completely acceptable, occasionally it doesn't hurt to remind them by playing the track again. So as we said, Zilkeen Pet has detailed instructions and also the tracks, and you can also um, buy tracks from iTunes as a download at Sound Therapy for Pets. Other top tips that you might want to consider, try freezing um, your treats, uh, it makes them a little bit different, makes them perhaps last a little bit longer, so that's quite a good tip. Um, and also giving Zilkeen during the process will help them cope and maximise your chances of success. So um, giving Zilkeen obviously start before you start your sound desensitisation and then carry on with it all the way through the process until you get to the stage where you're playing the full firework display and your pet's still happy with that. One last caveat point, don't play them when your pet is asleep. Um, your pet won't be aware of them when they're asleep and then if they wake up and there's a full firework display going off, they're not going to learn that that's not scary, that probably would scare them. So make sure that your pet's always awake when you're playing the track. So to summarise, in the short term, we're going to prepare before bonfire night and the firework season by building a den for your dogs, making sure that your cats have all the resources that they need and starting Zilkeen at least a few days before and preferably walking dogs during daylight hours if you can. Actually on the day, we want to ignore their unusual behaviour, but if they come to you for reassurance, offer it to them as you would normally. Make sure all your doors and windows are closed. Make sure that for cats you've got all the resources that they need and actually consider providing extra litter trays just because if they're used to toileting outside um, you might need a few extras so that they don't get caught short. Provide distractions for your cat or dog, be that a toy or a treat. Um, draw the curtains and turn on the TV or radio to muffle the sounds. Don't leave your pets alone if you possibly can and obviously don't punish your pets. With regards to sound desensitisation, fear can have a cumulative effect over time and it can make things worse. So actually we would recommend trying to nip it in the bud by doing sound desensitisation. You can get those um, by buying them or you can get them online um, and you'd want to slowly introduce those sounds to your pet in a controlled manner. Give Zilkeen alongside to maximise your chances of success and obviously with all of these things, speak to your vet or speak to a qualified behaviourist and they can offer you more advice and help and particularly target it to your particular pet. So I'd like to say thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for having me on this webinar. I hope it's been useful and good luck.